Welcome back to Generation XG, where it's now time for a special managerial masterclass. When Pep Guardiola said this about Roberto De Zerbi's Brighton, needless to say, it caught our attention. So we sent Glenn Murray to his former club to discuss all things build-up play with the man behind Brighton's brilliance. Roberto, thank you for joining us to talk tactics. I suppose we could start with your centre-backs because they're, they're, they play a big role in your team. What, what do you expect from your centre-backs and, and start in, sort of, I suppose, positive phases of play? Uh, to command the play because everything starts from them and to, to try to enjoy because uh, if you want to command, to control the game, to command the play, you have to enjoy. So, so when Luis or say John Vol Van Hecker is on the ball, what what is happening in these midfield areas and in fullback areas to to try and create an advantage higher up the field? I usually um, make a difference in uh, build up uh, goal kick, build up open play, and build up higher. No, and we change uh, uh, structure uh, depending on where is the ball and uh, how many striker we 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 find as a opponent no the distance is 10 12 meters the midfielder in our half of the pitch we are usually to to put uh, in this position and uh, number 9 number 10 <clears throat> depending on the characteristic of the players so is the idea to get them to, to entice them to press to create more space here? No, because uh, the first fault uh, in this position is are, are two. To go to score, but to think if we lose the ball, uh, solid. we are yes, yeah, solid to don't concede goal. I would like six players in build up deeper, always. Even though you're trying to create an overload here with your six here, it's still important what these guys are doing beyond because you like to break through, don't you? Break the lines. Yes, because if you have only one, we have only one player who can give an uh, angle to, to reach. For example, if we play like this and before the, game, the ball was in uh, number four yeah. and Adam Lallana, for example, is in the right side, our right side. If there is this pressure, number four plays in number five. Here, there isn't the, too, too the far, third too, man. Too, no? too much space to and get And for it, uh, I thought at the beginning no, to put two, one. With two players here, the opponent has to decide or come here and defend man to man and there is this space, or they stay like this, but we stay eight, again, seven. So it's your setting trap. So in this instance, if they line up like this, your nine or your 10 can possibly get it, get on the half turn. If they engage, we've seen Jason Steele go right through and- Yes, recover. there is space here. If they stay like this, in this, we are uh, one player more, and the play will be to find the free man. So it's just like a big moving chessboard for you. That's the way you see football at the moment. No, in, I think it's uh, easier than uh, on the pitch, easier than uh, on board, no? Because on board you can explain, but uh, it's difficult to understand. Another important uh, thing is the, the, the pressure, the direction uh, of the pressure, uh, for example, If the pressure starts from the number eight, yeah. so he's cutting this eight off. we finish at number eight because number five is the ball, receive this pressure. Number three is pressure. Now we are playing, but the play is commanding from the opponent. As soon as that passes into that nine, this eight breaking off the back, isn't he? Yes, because if the number eight stays in the same uh, position, Receive number five, 
and this one come here. If number five receives the ball, number five receives this pressure, and he follow two meters, three meters, yeah. this space is too he's much. fire yeah. this distance. And he can play with different body shape, uh, ready to play in another side, for example, because can receive number five, receive this pressure, Fairman received this pressure. It's the same. The where the pressure started, we have to, we have, we would have, because the idea is 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 this. I love uh, playing uh, different, no style, but different solution, depending of the characteristic of the players. Because on the pitch they play, on the pitch they have to 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 try the the solution. And they can't move the jo the player like a, with a joystick, no. When you say about char characteristics of players, you've got three forwards. You're blessed with a lot of talent. What do you expect for them individually? If we want to control the the game, we need uh, number nine, smart, intelligent, to understand when he has to play, when he has to attack the space. When he has to open this space for the, for Mitoma, for example, uh, or to open this other space, if you work in uh, for Brighton, you have to to work for the players first of all, and then for sure we can't uh, forget our style. We can't forget uh, through the the quality of the play. We can compete with the big teams. In this board, there is myself, there is my history, there is my character, there is my uh, madness, no? <laughs> Everything. You've just summed it up perfectly, so thank you very much for your time. You. Yes, you, we didn't speak in higher, eh? Oh, well, I've run out of time, huh? Uh, Roberto, Roberto, we can stay all day if you want. <laughs> Next time. We'll be back. Part when you two. want, when you want. Okay. <laughs> thank you to Brighton and Roberto De Zerbi for that behind the scenes look. And thank you to Glenn Murray as well. To pity Glenn couldn't quite convince them to go a bit longer because that was fascinating, wasn't it? But it's interesting when you get those coaches tactically that are so good, they want to talk football. Yeah. He actually, he probably had an allotted time because he had other commitments. But when they talk football and when they talk tactics, they want to go on. You want to talk about the top of the pitch, not just playing out from the back. Were you impressed with what he's done at Brighton and how he's developed them? Oh, I, I said it even last season. I think outside of Pep, I think they play the best football. The, the most aggressive, the bravest. Um, and they don't have the personnel that the other top teams have. The Zerbi will be at a top team soon, whether it's Man City, whether it's Man United, whether it's Real Madrid, Barcelona. He will be at one of those clubs eventually because his football is suited to the top teams. Players want to play this way get the ball down and play at every point. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Mm. We didn't get to see the top end of the pitch, didn't we, did mm. we, Leroy? But it was fascinating how we, how we talked about the, the, the build-up play from the back. It's, is it something you've seen in that depth before? Absolutely. I've seen some of the greatest coaches in, in the world on tactic sports. But it's how it translates onto, onto the pitch. And I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And we've seen examples of it this season. Let's start with, with this one against Tottenham uh, earlier in the year. And firstly, I'm just going to just focus on where the ball starts. It starts in that six-yard box. And people always ask me, why is, the, why is the goalkeeper coming to play around the six-yard box? And the reason why the goalkeeper's coming to play is because he centralises the press. So the opposition don't know which side of the pitch the ball's going. They don't know if it's going to go that side. They don't know if it's going to go that side. And look what that does to the opposition in terms of spreading them out. So if they try to cover every single base on the whole of the pitch. So that's the first thing. But when they get the ball, he talked about the positions of the players. Now, obviously, the, these are the two, two centre-halves and these two midfield players are key in behind those two front players. And he's, remember he said about the first one to jump, that's the person he wants to get to. I'm just going to start this clip off very, very slowly. And as it has progressed, it goes to, to the goalkeeper. And you'll see the first Tottenham player come into play. I'm just going to stop it there. Stop it there, sorry. Because the first Tottenham comes into play is Richarlison there. Now, people say, well, is he pressing? Well, not, he's, he's not. What he's doing is he's cutting off that passing lane so to stop him going down that left-hand side of the pitch. The first player to jump for Tottenham is actually this guy there. So in that tactics board, Deserby said, the player we want 
to get out with the ball is the player who's been front marked by him, which is gross. So that's the player they need to get out. Now it's down to the players to find the right pass. And as we, as we play it on now, you'll see Skuliskesi goes, but I just stop it there. Now, that is a press. That is a definite press. And it's this guy, Gross, who's free in all sorts of space. And what I really liked, Tony, is about him talking about players can change their body position. What did you think he meant by that? Change their body shape when they receive well, the ball? Well, I, I remember seeing him on the preseason tour this summer mm -hmm. and he went crazy on the bench in a, in a friendly, in a preseason friendly. Mm -hmm. And it was because I think it was Dahoud wasn't on the half turn. Yeah. He, he was facing the ball and he won on the half turn. So in case when it came out, they could get straight out. And that's what I mean. The detail of, you know, whether a foot that way or that way is, is incredible. It is incredible. But why that, that's all going on? You've got to look at what's happening at the top end of the pitch because it's just as important. You see these two guys, they've dropped in to this area. And what they're trying to do is to get these guys to come out of that area there. Because this is the space that they eventually want to get into. But this guy, his body, body shape is really important because he's got to open his body up and utilise that space that's been created by driving forward with his, with his first touch. And they do it really well. But Van Hecker, who's on the ball, just look at the, the pace of his pass. If he doesn't get this pass right, everything breaks down. He gets the pace of the pass on his first touch absolutely right. Into his feet, and they try to go in behind. But that's why there's so, it's incredible how much detail there is in the positions and everything. But actually, the players are the ones that need to execute. We've been there, Leon, where you, you've been in a position to think, mm, is this, do I feel comfortable? But actually, he empowers the players to feel comfortable in difficult situations, and that's incredible coaching. It's incredible coaching, and I think it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And this one was against Man City, uh, Leon, and it's a slightly different shape from, from Man City. Let's look, look, look at the, the Brighton shape. It's a little bit higher up the pitch than the last one. There's the two midfield players, but the City players are, are more or less engaged, aren't they? They're right, really engaged. Now, the person I want you to watch here is Bernardo Silva. And the reason why, and this is Jason Steele in goal, and the reason why everybody's raving about Jason Steele is because his decision making with his feet is absolutely incredible. Again, again, while, while you're looking at that, look at the top of the pitch and look what these two players do because they do come into these areas and look what it does to the two Man City centre halves. There's a lot to look at, but I'm going to play it through slowly. So Steele's got the ball in his hand and as he drops it, to the ground, Bernardo Silva will release himself. And this isn't cutting off a passing lane, this is to go and press. Now he's just on his way, it's just about, he's creeping, he's creeping, and Bernardo Silva, now he's gone. I'm just gonna pause it there. Bernardo Silva's gone, so, Bernard, so Roberto De Zerbe saying now, that is the man who, who's belabor on this occasion, who's got to get the ball. And you're thinking, well, how's he gonna get it there? But still, he's so good at this because he recognizes that. And it's just a little bounce pass off the other midfield player. And he's in. But now he gets turned. I'm just going to pause it there. Look at the two centre halves. Look where they are. They are 20 metres inside <laughs> their own half. And these two guys are in one on one situations. That doesn't happen if they don't do that. And, uh, and so this coach, I think, Owen, is absolutely brilliant from the, from the, the, the defensive side, uh, sorry, part of the pitch, the attacking side. And it's all about the timing as well. Which is actually but that's on. why the, the detail mm -hmm. is remarkable. And everybody complains about the way United play or don't play out from the back. It's because they don't do this. There's, mm -hmm. there's no patterns to play out from the back. There's no... And, and that's why I think the Zerbi will end up at one of the biggest jobs because there is so much detail in his coaching. It's so vital. You, you mentioned it already, mm -hmm. that Balaba gets turned there yeah. and uses that body position and opens his body up and suddenly you beat those players behind you. If he doesn't and he goes straight back, then it's, it's kind of pointless. But... They've got Manchester City stretched. You don't see Manchester City get no. stretched that often with a team that is so comfortable at taking the ball. And every one of those players is a very technical footballer. And you can see why I'm sure he enjoys managing them. Yeah, I think you're absolutely spot on, Leon. And you, as it, it, this develops, you'll see that Vileba gets forward. And City defend well because they don't allow that pass to get in, in behind. But what they, they do... So the, the best option now is Vileba is to give it to his feet. And we know how good Matoma has been this season. And, and look where it ends up, from still having it at his feet, dropping it to, the, to, uh, to his feet. Bernardo Silva sets the trigger, they find the spare man, they end up with a shot, what, eight yards from goal. It's absolutely brilliant and it's so, so wonderful to see. And it's nice that actually we've got these young coaches that are being brave. Zerbi, Pep, Postacoglu, Klopp. Mm -hmm. And actually for these young coaches coming through now, they, they can be confident that they can play. They can yeah. get the ball and down play from the goalkeeper, from the centre back, and trust the players. They might fail at the beginning, yeah. But actually, these guys are going to grow and going to get better and better. So it's, 
amazing to watch these young coaches, the detail. And I heard loads of people saying, why, why do people play at the back? Why do they risk the ball? Have yeah. a look at those clips. Yeah. That's why people yeah. play at the back. Well, it's proof that all the hard work on the training field, all the things that go on behind the scene, are worth doing that they, they end up giving your product out there on the on the pitch. Well it was a it was a great part of that Leroy. Thank you very much. Well off to Arsenal in the next part. Arsenal haven't had the best time over the Christmas period. They've had goals of hard to come by. Wasn't the so against Crystal Palace. We'll have a look what changed after the break. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.